This is Nasha Kasha, Ukrainian Almanac. 28 minutes of stories for everyone about Ukrainian life. Nasha Kasha is heard on 19 campus and community radio stations from Newfoundland to British Columbia. I'm your reporter, Stefan Andrusiak, and this is episode 235, The Garlic Edition. Mididus любил часник. Він був міцний, як той бік. Часиком він все лічив, сто два роки він прожив. Back in the golden glow of my teenaged summers, our Ukrainian community would nestle in the foothills of Quebec's Laurentian Mountains. Camp Forkovina is 88 kilometers northwest of Montreal. The village baker would deliver an armful of fresh bread daily to our campers. As a matter of fact, that bakery still exists and it is still called Pain de Campagne, Camp Bread. Some nights after the children were put to bed, two counselors would remain to walk the rounds overseeing their calm and their well-being, while the rest of us would descend to the camp's dining hall kitchen. We'd appropriate one of those heavenly pain de campagne loaves with butter and salt, a cold glass of milk at the ready, and on each buttered, salted slice, we'd heap ample helpings of chopped raw garlic. The treat was a ritual, a coming of age that unapologetically signaled that we loved who we were and loved the food that is part of our soul. It is 2020. We are hunkered down to meet the deadly serious challenges of a worldwide pandemic. Now, garlic is no cure, but it might help. Eating garlic offers an incentive to not come too close. You might call it the two meter or the six feet keep back rule. <laughs> Ukrainians simply call it chesnik. <laughs> This is Burlake from Montreal with their garlic song, Chasnik. Dobry den. My name is Andrea Lescu from LaSalle, Ontario, located in the Windsor vicinity. My late parents were Catherine and Walter Lescu. I have an endearing Chasnik story about my dido, Yulian Popovich. He, along with my uncle, Vojkovacel, owned a hotel in Windsor. On Fridays, on a bi-leaky basis, after a hard week's work, I have fond memories of my tato recalling having a chesnik party at my babcia and Gido's apartment. My father would attend occasionally. They would partake in this on Fridays as the aroma of the chesnik would be out of their system before they had to go back to work. They would make a sandwich with two pieces of bread, buttered on both sides, and of course, the Provdevi real chesnik. This gave them the opportunity to gather together, bond, laugh, and share stories and memories of the past and present. From Ukraina, Toronto, and Windsor, where they used to reside. Although this was a guy's night in, being the youngest in the family, an only child, and a girl at that, my father brought me along once to join them. I felt very privileged, as my mother, Katrusia, was not invited. Tieto asked me if I wanted to try the chesnek sandwich, but I kindly refrained and kept my distance. Don't get me wrong. I love chesnek, but not prepared in its clove state. Finally, my Yido, in a joking manner, said, 
Andrichu Nekaje Mami, meaning Andrea, don't tell mom. I will always cherish that memory. Miji dush, you build chasnek. Miji dush, you build chasnek. Bimbo mix, the yakoi bit. Chasnek coming, send it chill. Stop that up, give him brochure. Bimbo motsni. Being a cabinet maker, he was never afraid of hard work. Andrea Lescu is my cousin. Jakuyu Andrika. Hi, I'm Ihor Kapp. I live in Winnipeg now, and this is my Chusnik story. I grew up in the core area of Montreal on 3856 Rue de Bouillon or de Bouillon Street. It's a famous street because they filmed the apprenticeship of Duddy Kravitz right on the corner of my street. A lot of Ukrainian immigrants settled in the area, you know, on St. Laurent, Clark Street, Urban Street, Roy Street. Uh, you had Moisha's Steakhouse around the corner, Turkish Bath, even a Ukrainian Saturday school on Duluth Street. Well, there was a Ukrainian bakery in the area, too. What great rye bread they had. My mom or dad would send me there to pick up a few loaves. I'd carry them home in paper bags, and the aroma of this fresh rye bread coming out of the bags, well, you know, you just had to take a bite of it. Those of you who still carry fresh bread home know what I'm talking about. I mean, the bread was practically talking to me. I'd say, you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Don't talk to me or I'll bite your head off. That was the best part of the bread uh, when it was unsliced. Imagine, they send a little kid to get fresh rye bread alone in the core area and you expect the loaf to come back whole? Not going to happen. Anyway, that's not the best part of the story. When I got home and after getting an earful for biting off the bread... We would all sit down and cut a slice or two of the loaf. Then you would press the garlic clove hard against the bottom of the rye bread, back and forth against the rough and bumpy surface where all the seeds were, and then slide the rest of the oozing wet clove over the top part of the slice. A hit of the aroma would reach your nose. It was the perfect bread to go with your bowl of hot Ukrainian borscht that was waiting on the table. I was in heaven. My dad would say, it's good for you. It has anti-inflammatory properties. I guess that meant no one would mess with you because if I huffed and puffed at them, it would noticeably increase their anxiety levels. I don't do that anymore. The bread does not have enough seeds on the bottom these days, at least in my area. Nowadays, my beautiful wife makes me a Ukrainian oil pan-fried toast called hrimka, and you could garlic down the whole toast because it's rough everywhere. It's the best. And it still retains all of its magical powers. Amazing. By the way, it's also a good way to end the parent-teacher conference fast. Our next story comes from Edmonton. Hi, I'm Larissa Tsimbaduk Chaladin, and when I think about garlic, many memories come to mind. There were the summer wiener roasts with Baba and Yido on the farm, and Baba always layered a garlic leaf in each of our hot dog buns, along with mustard and relish. It was to keep us healthy. Then there was the time that a group of us teenagers were out caroling, and one of the generous hosts served us studenats and crackers with salamaha, which is garlic spread. Later, we were pulled over by the police at a check stop. The officer leaned into the car as the driver rolled down the window, and wow, did he jump back fast from the aroma that wafted out of the car. And then there are the numerous times that I've tried to paint and found it challenging to get the feel of the thin paper that wraps each head of garlic it's really hard to get it down on paper with watercolors. But the story that's the most memorable is the day I came home to visit Mama and Tato. Mama invited me over saying that Dad was suffering from a chest cold and needed cheering up. When I walked in, it was obvious that Dad's friend, Michael Kalinowski, had beat me to it. As the door opened, I was greeted by two men singing at the top of their lungs and the smell of garlic and cognac was so powerful I leaned back out the door to inhale some fresh air. The scene before me was a table littered with fine garlic paper from at least four heads of garlic, the heel of a fresh loaf of bread, and a couple of glasses of water. Like proper gentlemen, the two of them had fashioned fancy towels around their necks, like ascots. They held out brandy snifters, laden with the finest from Dad's stash, and were mid-chorus of their favorite Ukrainian folk song, Oi Uldusi Chervona Kalena. 
It was the ultimate garlic party. It took them a couple of days to recover from their colds, that is, but I doubt either of them caught another one for many years after that. А у Лузі Червона Калина by Хайда Маке, featuring Тоня Матвієнко. It's a battle song that says Ukraine will one day smile again. Hi, my name is Brian Chidovec, and I uh, currently live in St. John's, Newfoundland. But uh, I grew up in the north end of Winnipeg, and uh, when I was a boy, my uh, baba worked for uh, a catering company. Across the street from the place where they prepared their food was one of the uh, North End's uh, many famous bakeries. And uh, one Saturday she came back from doing the food preparation and brought home a loaf of fresh rye bread. Uh, my Jida wanted to initiate me <laughs> into uh, this ritual that, that he used to have. He cut up some pieces of that rye bread and uh, proceeded to rub raw chestnut all along the the rough, kind of ridged bottom edge of that of piece of bread. The two of us enjoyed uh, eating that uh, so much that we decided we should have a second piece. And I think we had about three or four pieces of bread, which included, I guess, three or four cloves of chestnut each, until my baba came in to give us both action, saying, how are you guys going to sing in church tomorrow morning if you smell like this? <laughs> I don't really have any... So I've, I've written a number of crazy songs that talk about different kinds of Ukrainian food. Uh, I haven't actually written one about chestnut, but I must mention that when I first moved to uh, Newfoundland, uh, many people might know me from our band called the Kubasonics, and uh, I played with the band, started that, the idea of that group, and we played for many years in Alberta when I lived there. And uh, before we got that on the go again, I, I, I had another was asked to play at a couple events here in town and put together a, a prototype of that, of the new Kubusonics. But we played a number of shows and under the title of our band was called The Republic of Garlic. So I guess that's our nod to, uh, to Chesnick. As we listen to the Kubusonics playing in the background, it's worthy of note that one major seasoning in Kubasa is garlic which brings us to this story. My name is Mike Moibroda from Montreal, Quebec. As a youth, I spent many summers at the Sum camp in Chersey, Quebec, called Verkhovena. My friends and I were often involved in mischievous but harmless activities. One of these was the Kubasa caper. One particular Saturday, food preparations were underway for visitors arriving on Sunday. The women volunteers were preparing potatoes, cabbage, kubasa meals to sell at lunch the next day. Being young, growing boys with healthy appetites, we were always hungry and on the lookout for late-night snacks. One of our Hortok members snuck into the main camp kitchen where he found a whole ring of kubasa, which was too much to resist. The culprit... <clears throat> wrapped the kubasa around his waist under uh, his shirt and casually returned to our palanka, our sleeping quarters, where we all feasted on the delicious loot. The next day, my mother, who was one of the camp kitchen volunteers, stopped me to ask if I knew anything about missing kubasa. I pled ignorance, to which my mother responded with skepticism. Why do you smell of garlic? Uh-oh. I thought to myself, garlic bread. To this day, I don't know if she believed my innocence. Oh, 
an ode to a garden. Oi, Nahorogi! Tetiana Buchenko sings of her garlic and her beets, grateful for her bountiful harvest. To my family and friends in the United States, Happy Thanksgiving! My name is Veronica Nikolika, and I live in Windsor, Ontario. When I was a little girl, I started watching those silly horror movies on Saturday afternoons, unbeknownst to my parents. There were stories about people using garlic to ward off evil vampires. Then as I grew into a young teen and young adult, I read Stephen King novels, and one of his books involved vampires. It was chilling, of course. Fears of vampires were invariably associated with garlic. Somewhere in that discourse, I heard about Transylvania and the garlic mythology. I grew up thinking I was born in Romania because we used to listen to Romanian music, went to a Romanian Orthodox church, and spoke the language. My grandmother and great-grandmother insisted I speak Romanian to them so as not to lose my first language, Romanian. When I was a young teenager, I realized we were actually born in the province of Serbia, then part of the former Yugoslavia. I asked my mother about it and questioned our ethnic background. She said we were cultural Romanians. So I was born confused. And you may be able to forgive the kind of crazy association between garlic and vampires that crept under my consciousness for years. My mother cooked with garlic constantly. In my child's mind, I assumed it was because she was trying to protect us all from vampires. I grew up associating garlic with vampires and wouldn't have garlic in my place when I got my first apartment. It seems so silly now. I looked up the whole garlic warding off vampires myth and discovered it's widespread in the Greek and many other cultures, not just in Romanian culture. However, generally in Romania, garlic was considered to have magical properties to keep people safe from all kinds of evil spirits and protect the animals as well. On certain days like St. Andrew's Day, which falls on November 30th, Christmas Day and New Year's Eve, the locals, apparently, especially in Transylvania, use garlic juice to make a Christian cross on their door frames, window frames, and barns to protect from evil spirits. When I finally started dining out on our famous Erie Street in Windsor, many of the fabulous Italian restaurants are there with their garlicky pastas and seafood dishes, I fell in love with garlic again. Now I can't cook without garlic, mostly. Soups, roasted potatoes with garlic, some fresh rosemary if you have it in the summer like I did, chicken, fish, steak. Well, I would invite you for dinner, but of course, that's not recommended, sadly. When this pandemic ends, you're welcome to my house for something garlicky. And if there are any magical properties of garlic, we will be well protected. Hi, it's Marika Paulius from West St. Paul, Manitoba. I live just outside the city of Winnipeg. And as a young girl, I grew up in West Kildonan. And yes, my mother being a typical Ukrainian mama, we had the garden. And we had the big prize in the garden, the elephant ear chestnut. This was supposed to be the best. But I was not that fond of garlic. For our Sunday meals, it would be chicken, gravy, potatoes, and there would always be the chestnut. I remember on one Sunday, I got a nice piece of pork on my plate. I cut it, and there were two or three big cloves of garlic. Not a fan of it. Then my family decided to open up a restaurant in the Exchange District. We had quite an eclectic group of customers. There were factory owners, people from City Hall, quite a few from the police department, starting from the chief all the way down to undercover guys. So garlic was not big on the list because they would have to go see people, have meetings, and they were usually in a rush because it was a quick diner that we had. There were homemade pickles, of course, laden with the chestnut, and on special occasions, mom would make studenets. But I remember one customer in particular. He owned a jean factory. He came in for lunch all the time, and they were opening up a new factory. They needed a bigger facility. We, from Pat's lunch, were invited to the grand opening. 
here we came in, and there's many dignitaries from Winnipeg, and it's quite an occasion to be there. But we just walked in from work, dressed in our work clothes, and carrying a big bag. And in this bag, we had a gallon of homemade pickles with the chestnut. And we gave it to Bobby, and he said this was the greatest gift he got that day. He loved the pickles. He received beautiful arrangements, but this one seemed to be his favorite. Maybe the chestnut helped him in the future years because he did become owner of the Winnipeg Free Press. These are a few of my favorite memories of Chisnek. I've grown to like it, and I use it quite a bit at home myself now. I too have fond memories of the wonderful food at Pat's Lunch in Winnipeg. You see, Marika is also my cousin. This is Manitoba-born performer, composer Evan Wish. His song, The Hill. Nasha Kasha comes to you from Radio Western 94.9 FM on the campus of Western University in London, Ontario, Canada. We're heard on CHMR 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland, on CKDU 88.1 FM in Halifax, on Local 107.3 FM in St. John, New Brunswick, on CJAS Radio 93.5 FM in San Agustin, Quebec, on CJLO 1690 AM in Montreal, on CFRC 101.9 FM in Kingston, on CFMU 93.3 FM in Hamilton, On CKMS 102.7 FM in Kitchener, Waterloo. On CJAM 99.1 FM in Windsor and Detroit. On CKLU 96.7 FM in Sudbury. On CILU 102.7 FM in Thunder Bay. On 101.5 UMFM in Winnipeg. On CJTR 91.3 FM in Regina. On CFMQ 98.1 FM in Hudson Bay, Saskatchewan on CFBX 92.5 FM in Kamloops, on CIVL 101.7 FM in Abbotsford, on CJSF 90.1 FM in Vancouver, and on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo, British Columbia. I'd like to take this time to remind you that Nasha Kasha is a widely available podcast. Partial funding for Nasha Kasha comes from the Shuchenko Foundation and from the Ukrainian Credit Union. Hi, this is Donna Keller from Caledon, Ontario. Who on earth would have thought that pampushke weren't only jelly-filled donuts? Growing up in a Ukrainian household, garlic was a staple in our home. Garlic was on chicken, pork, steak, potatoes, even sometimes eggs. And then came garlic and onions on absolutely everything. The one very funny moment I remember as a young child was running up to the bus stop to meet my Dido. He always carried a box of raspberry pampushke every time he visited us. Oh, they were my favorite. The sweet, oozing raspberry filling was in every bite. Sometimes they had sugar on top and sometimes they didn't. But it didn't matter. What was inside that pampushok was golden. On this one particular day, I remember Mama telling me that I have to wait until after dinner to have a bump of shock. My Dido kept looking at the table like something was missing. I thought nothing of it, not even to ask. I ate everything on my plate and ran for the box of bump Oh, I was so excited. They looked different, but due to my sheer excitement of chowing down on that donut, I took a huge bite out of it and screamed in disgust. Dido yelled out, Oh, there they are. He brought garlic pampushke and not my raspberry-filled donuts. And by the look on everyone else's faces, I think they too were looking forward to the raspberry pampushke. If you are Ukrainian and you really can cook, you don't need a recipe, you read in a book. You know what to put in everything that you make, whether it's a casserole or cherry cheesecake. The number one ingredient to give it a kick. You start by peeling a clove of chestnut. Lots of garlic's good for you, it really can't hurt. We 
poured it into everything from soup to dessert. We bake it and we fry it and we cook it in stew. Or how about a creamy garlic sundae for you? Cooking in your cranium, well, there isn't a trick. You start by peeling a clove with your snake. A clove with your snake. Or two or three there, a clove with your snake. Or that's from me there, a clove with your snake. You gotta see there, it simply ain't your cranium if there don't just make. A clove with your snake. For your good chat, a clove with your snake. You lucky fella, a clove with your snake. You sure will smell a, it simply ain't your cranium if there's no just snake. Hi, this is Miron Spoisky from Cave. I'm the owner of Vesuvio Pizza, Cave's or Ukraine's first pizzeria. Founded in 1992, back in the good old days. Garlic is Ukraine's national food. It's not borscht, it's not vareniki, it's not holubci, it's not sal. It's garlic, just nick. When we opened our pizza place here in Cave, we made our pizzas just like you would have them in, in North America. Interesting, but nothing overly spectacular for the average consumer. And people started coming in and asking for garlic and more garlic and more garlic. And finally, in about 1995, a group of customers walked in and they said they want a hot and spicy pizza. So out came the Tabasco sauce and along came a lot of garlic. And the garlic went on raw and Tabasco sauce on top of that. And that was a hot pizza. But they didn't walk to a group of Americans and said, we want hotter pizza than that. That's not hot enough. So we made what is now called our Diablo. And it's got a lot of meat and it's got a lot of garlic. I mean, a lot. It's probably got seven or eight cloves on one large pizza, an 18 inch pizza. And so we continued. So everything you have here, whether it's borscht or even vareniki, or whatever we make at the pizza place, it's got to have garlic. No garlic, no customer. That's the way it is. The pizza sauce, garlic. On top of the cheese, garlic. It's got to have garlic. If you don't want to have garlic, you got to tell the waitress, no garlic, please. Otherwise, you eat garlic and you blend in with the local population. So remember, cooking with your snake is real cool. A lot of garlic, it'll make you drool. Take a garlic sandwich now to school every day. Don't be too surprised if all your friends stay away. Lots of garlic helps you so that you won't get sick. Ron Kohut and his garlic song, Chusnik, from the 2016 album Borscht. Give me some Chusnik! Back in a week, God willing, to Melissa Zustrich, she's a teaching Chusu. Durhi Sluchachi.